So what is the reason why, um, you know, we went with the church in Punchbowl? Well, what is the best reason to do anything in life? You need to base it on the Word of God, right? You need to see what the Word of God says, see if there's any example from the Word of God, see if there's any uh, commandment from the Word of God to do a certain thing that you do, and then follow that. And then at least you know you're building your house on a rock and you're building your house on solid ground. Somebody might say, well, Baptist is a Bible word. You know, Baptist does come from the Bible. We see the word Baptist in the Bible. John was a Baptist, it's a Bible word. But so is Pentecost. Pentecost is a Bible word. I'm not going to call my church a Pentecostal church. You know, the word Presbytery is in the Bible. Am I going to call my church a Presbyterian church? Um, so just because a word is, a, is, is in the Bible, that doesn't mean I'm going to use the word to name my church just because it's in the Bible. Um, I need to look to see if there's any patterns in the Bible. And um, let's turn to that. Let's turn to Revelation 2 and see if we can see a pattern in the Bible of how to name or how to refer to churches. Revelation 2, unto the, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden uh, candlesticks. Verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Uh, verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword uh, with two edges. Verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Revelation 3.1. I don't know if you're seeing a pattern here, and I know you probably know where I'm getting at, but verse, Revelation 3.1, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. You know the thought I had when I read that verse? Because, you know, people will say, you know, that wasn't the name of the churches. That was just God. You know, that was just describing the church and where they were. But isn't that what a name is meant to be? Isn't, that an, isn't, isn't a name meant to describe you? So even if it's not the name of the church, we can see here that that's how Jesus referred to them. Because it says here, this is the thought I had, it says that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Because maybe these churches did have names. Right? Maybe, maybe the church in Sardis was called, you know, uh, you know, Living Hope Sardis, Sardis Baptist Church or something. Living Hope Baptist Church. And that's why God is saying, you have a name that you live, but you're dead. Because maybe your name is Living Baptist Church, but I know you're dead. But even though they had a name, he still referred to them as the church in Sardis. Why didn't he refer to them as Sardis Baptist Church? If that's how we're meant to be naming our churches. Verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Anyway, I won't belabor that point. But how many times do you see in the word of God the church in Thyatira, the church in Sardis, the church of God which is at Corinth, the church in Jerusalem, the church which was at Antioch, the ch the, 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 those are elect with you at the church in Babylon. And you know what's funny? Because you know preachers go on and on and on about, you know, you know, we got to do things the way the Bible does it. You know, you know, don't follow, you know, don't follow the traditions of man. I'm not going to do what man does. I want to do what the Bible does. You know, you do something that's outside of the Bible and they're like, why are you doing that? Where do you see that in the Bible? And the same people that are going on and on and on like that, they're the same people that have traditions that aren't in the Bible and they go on and on and on about it. So isn't that, isn't that a bit hypocritical there? Uh, you know, and I'm just trying to apply this thinking of doing everything the way the Bible does it in every area of my life, in every area of church. And if there's something that you think we do here that isn't scriptural, then let me know because we've got to change it. We've got to do it the way the Bible says to do it. This is the point I'm at now. This is why we do church the way we do now because this is how I believe church should be done. 
But if I'm wrong in any, any area, you need to let me know because we need to make sure that we're doing it the way the Bible says it. So, you know, it's true. You know, they say your name has to identify you and I believe our name does identify us because, you know, what are we? We're a church in the Punchbowl area, so we're called the church in Punchbowl. And you know what's great about God's Word is when you're given so many examples of something, you're given clear direction on, on something to do, it makes the decision very easy. Um, when the Bible commands you to do something, you don't have to decide whether or not to do it or not. You know that's the right thing to do. And those of you that know me, I am really bad at making small decisions. You know, when it comes to what projector to buy, you know, how to set up this, how many, what chairs to buy, you know, you know what, what colour of, of a certain thing to buy. You know, I rack my brain over, you know, making the website look just nice, the way I think it should look. Because there's just too many decisions. You know, what font to use, what colours to use, what pictures to use. And it just, oh, I just, I hate making these little decisions. I'm really bad at it. But you know what's funny about the way I am? There are big decisions in life that people take a lot of time to make. And I, I just make those instantly. Who to marry? If I know that's God's will, you know, me and Elizabeth, we got married. I proposed to her in three weeks and we were married in two months. And I didn't see that as a big deal because I know what God's word says about who to marry. So I knew I was making the right decision. You know, where to live. People will think, oh, do I live here? Do I live there? When I was coming back to Australia, it was an easy decision for me where to live. I moved to Sydney because there was a good church there, a good Bible-believing, soul-winning, King James-only church. I didn't even give it a second thought. I just think, you know what? I'm going to find a way to move my family over to Sydney. So there are things like that. It's funny because when the, when the Word of God has direction, for me, that makes decision-making very simple. Um, but when the, the Word of God doesn't have direction, that's where I struggle a bit. So thank God that with something as trivial, trivial as the name of our church, there is some direction there. So I'm not thinking, oh, did I name it the right way? You know, I named it this Bible word, but now I like this Bible word. Um, and it's constantly changing. You know, thank God that's not going to happen. Now I have a convention in my own heart. Hey, that's how God calls churches. That's how I'm going to call the churches <coughs> that I um, am the bishop of. But somebody might say, well, what if you move suburbs? You know, what if we're not in Punchbowl anymore? What if we move to Auburn? Well, then we'll just change the name. <laughs> we'll be called the church in Auburn. It doesn't really matter. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to build a brand, guys. We're not trying to build this brand where we're going to get it out and, you know, give out Bibles that have, you know, the church in Punchbowl on it. And it's like, oh, man, this book is great. It's branded, church in Punchbowl. Because that really, that's, that's all that the name is. When you think about it, you know, you want to promote that name because it's about brand. Not that there's anything wrong with branding, but people want this brand so that they can get it out there, so that they start to know you. And there's nothing wrong. It's probably a, you know, a good idea in terms of marketing. But, you know, that is secondary to me, to um, doing the way I see it in the Word of God. So, you know, if we move suburbs, we'll just change the name. It might be a bit of a hassle. Um, I'm hoping we're not moving anytime soon. So that's one thing to think about for yourself. You know, when you go out and you, and you talk to people, you know, for those of you who are regular members here, you go out soul winning and you tell people which church you're from, hopefully that reasoning that I've gone through with you today uh, gives you some confidence when you say you're from the church in Punchbowl. You know why we're called the church in Punchbowl. You're, you're, you're proud, I guess, of going by that name, knowing that that's how God refers to our church. Um, because you don't, want that, you don't want that to sort of stumble you, you know, when you go out soul winning. You know, when somebody asks you what church are you from. You want to be able to explain to them, you know, we're not a denomination. We're independent. You know, we call ourselves the church in Punchbowl because that's what the Bible refers to as churches. And we just wanted a simple name that sounded independent. 